Good evening. It's Friday evening. It's just gone 5.30 and we're here for a brand new episode of Real, Random and Raw. Yes, each and every Friday, James Forrester and I will be here joining you with an array of special guests. Some from Birmingham, some from just outside, but tonight we have a fantastic lineup of people. All I say to you is make sure you've got yourself a drink, you can settle in and just enjoy some time with us this evening. Uh, it's going to be a great night, great guests. You're going to learn lots, laugh, hopefully, and enjoy the experience. Some have said that this show on a Friday night is like having Jeremy Clarkson and Graham Norton all in the same studio, but they're just on about James. I don't know what they'd be saying about me. Anyway, James, how are you? Very well, Phil. How are you doing? Great, really good. How's your week been? Um, yeah, it's been it's been a busy week this week. Um, property wise is okay, but we are seeing a little bit of a slowdown now uh, within the marketplace. Just people a bit nervousness about what's going on. Uh, a bit like the Ryanair advert of jab and go. Um, you know, I think people want to be jab and get out there um, and just <laughs> want to know what uh, what's happening. But um, you know, rightly so. You know, people want to know what's going on with jobs and stuff. But look, there's people still out there buying. There's still people out there renting. It's the best time to buy property still at the moment. Uh, interest rates are at record lows. Um, one this week, uh, just to give you an idea. Uh, yeah, first, um, she was a first time buyer. He's not. Uh, Barclays allowed them both to have the mortgage in their names, but only one on the title deed. First time I've ever heard that in a long, long time. Wow. So we're seeing some creative uh, creative stuff going on at the moment. We are in strange times. But, um, yeah, look, it's, it's like anything, isn't it? You've got, to, you've got to make a good situation out of bad. But apart from that, I can't complain. Ah, good. Well, we look around our beautiful city of Birmingham, and these erections are going up all over the show. Work is still continuing. So it's, it's great to see. Great to see. The only thing this week, James, has been the... The cold. Can you believe I've been Scotland there? Minus twenty. Oh, mate, it's uh, it's been it's been absolutely freezing where where I am here. It's uh, yeah, it's been. I think it's, we've had about minus six, minus seven. So it has been pretty cold. But uh, look, cars are still working in the cold. That's the main thing. I proved uh, the Tesla theory wrong this week that Tesla's doors don't open in the cold. Well, it's been covered in snow, frost, and ice. They still open. It still works. Electric is the way forward. Well, I had a friend sat in a Tesla the other day and they said they were freezing. I was like, I thought you got heating. It's an electric car, isn't it? Maybe it wasn't plugged in. Maybe they was out and about. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure they had the ride of their lives anyway. Let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> so, look, look, we've got some amazing guests. I'm really excited to see our collection uh, for the panel this evening. Uh, just to chat about, well, all sorts. Should we introduce them? Absolutely. Who have you got on board? Okay. So, uh, firstly, everybody's friend in the city. Um, although he's looking a bit like uh, Robinson Crusoe with that beard this evening. Uh, give it up nice and loud for the lovely Professor Paul Cadman. Welcome, Paul. Hi, good evening. Thank you very much for the invitation. Um, there's people I've known for 20 years that have not seen me with a head of hair. It's a few people who've seen me with a beard and things like that. But lockdown seems to have uh, regressed my age somewhat, I think. So, But thanks very much for inviting me, James, Phil. Looking forward to the entertainment from you, no doubt. Yeah, well, you're looking absolutely great. So uh, thank you thank for you. Uh, giving everything a trim for us. We'll go no further than that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this lady... Keep it clean. This is a family show. It's a pre <laughs> uh, This lady never fails to deliver. And what she's done in the last 10 years has been nothing less than remarkable. So I welcome this evening uh, the one and only, the councillor, Sharon Thompson. Welcome, Sharon. Thank you. Yay. I'm really looking forward to this evening. I was only coming on because I knew it was you and James, Phil. Ah, uh, yes. But I, you can't, I can't pour you a glass of wine from here, I'm afraid. So I hope you've got one there. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorted. Uh, we find out what people are drinking? Oh, introduce our last guest and then we'll find out what they're drinking. Fantastic. Okay, then a uh, multi-award winner from Boot Camp Media. Um, welcoming back to Real Random and Raw, we've got the lovely Jimmy Shabir. Welcome, Jimmy. Man, man a few words? 
Very, very few words. Um, <laughs> always, always a pleasure to be on uh, on the game with you guys. I seem to be a bit of a regular at the moment, um, but I've loved the last few shows, by the way, guys. Uh, I'm pleased to be here to share our journey with uh, my fellow co-founders here. The collective. Well, look, yeah. welcome to you. And then last, but by no means least, uh, we have Brandologist from Moo Design. Give it up nice and loud for Nick Hurd. Hello, Nick. Are you there? Oh, you might need to turn your microphone on, Nick. Right. Yeah. There I'm you are. The, uh, I reckon I'm the arse end of the cow, aren't I? <laughs> as long as you're not responsible for the methane. <laughs> uh, certainly not. Good to be here. Thank you for having me. Great, great to have you here. It, it, it's lovely to have you all here. Uh, and in particular, we're going to kick off this evening. Let's just get stuck straight in to what brings a lot of us together here, which is the amazing project that you kicked off the ground last year. Uh, sadly, we haven't got Gen 48 with us this evening, but the amazing project of Art for Charity. So probably I'll go straight to you, Paul, and just say, just give us an outline for anybody tuned in right now that's thinking, what is art for charity? Firstly, if they don't know what it is, where have they been? They could have been traveling around uh, outer space. <laughs> okay, coming back to Earth then. Art for charity is something that uh, was born out of when we first lockdown. Um, just sitting there listening to the negativity of the press, listening to everything that was just negative, 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 winding me up, grating on me and things like that. And then it was recognizing the key workers. So before anybody else jumped on the bandwagon, it was we wanted to show our appreciation for key workers and things like that. Um, we reached out to Gen48, who you may not know, some of you may or may not know, he's one of the best uh, graffiti artists in the world. He's in the top three graffiti artists, went off and um, defended his championship, uh, came back with a British uh, with a global top to Britain. We went out, We I put out on social media looking for a large war probably in all around the uh, the Digbeth area. Within the space of about two hours, had 20, 30 options. Nathana uh, from the melting pot and I went out looking at some different walls. We found a massive wall at the back of Norton's, Norton's Bar. Um, and we just went across, we looked at it, we got hold of Gent 48, said, what do you think? He, he nodded, grunted, went off, came back about 12 hours later with a load of designs about what we uh, we thought was appropriate. It went through the, uh, you know, the diversity police and everything else, less that, inclusivity. We looked at who was actually a key worker. So we looked at things like the post he was in there, the shop worker, as well as the, the normal traditional, the fire, the ambulance, the police, and of course, the NHS workers. And we got to work with creating the mural. The mural itself is probably 20 metres by 30 metres absolutely massive still in dig but still going to be there probably going to be around about 10 years before it starts to fade um following that it was uh, just the way we monetize it and we wanted to support some charities come some charities absolutely rock bottom how we monetize it and the way that we decided we we're going to monetize it was just by creating limited edition prints james has kindly put one up on the back but a very very small version of that that's a very small version. All right. That's a very small version of it. And you're right. If you've been in outer space, you won't have seen it. We've been everywhere. Um, we've got Nick Hurd, who's a brandologist. We've got Jimmy. We've got a few other people that have helped us out with social media. We've we've had Nick Kendall writing press releases. We've gone to India. We've gone all across the Middle East. We've gone to America, New Zealand, Australia. Everywhere has reported us on the news. In the newspapers, I think PR wise, we smashed it. Incredible. Wow. Now, there's certainly an introduction to the project. Of course, one of the most exciting things about it during lockdown was the fact that A, the sun was shining beautifully uh, whilst the artwork was being done. I know quite a few people got tanned down there, particularly Gent 48, we slowly watched his head go from pale white because he only comes out at night to be in this golden colour um, <laughs> by the end of the paintwork. Uh, Sharon, what made you get involved in this beautiful project, my lovely? 
I think when I went down and had a look at the actual mural, I just fell in love with it. It was so vibrant. It reflected how many of us were feeling in Birmingham at the time and really celebrated the strength of our emergency services who have been fantastic throughout. So that was brilliant. And it, the, the day of the launch just brought so many people together. And that vibe was just unbelievable. Um, I fell in love with the project then, but it's actually what happened after that. And it was the whole brummy mindset, as Paul would say, that kind of pushed it further and it went into a book. There was signing of the, the, you know, the mural and so many people, 250 dignitaries coming behind it. Why wouldn't you want to get involved with something like this? So um, I started to get a little bit more involved. I got invited to a meeting. I think they set me up um, because I wasn't going to be let go after that. Um, and then I became an official ambassador and sort of, it's sort of taken over a, a little bit of my life, I guess, this project has. Don't tell the boss, I'll get in trouble. But um, <laughs> it's been fantastic, it really has. But that, that's just one of the things that we are great for in Birmingham, isn't it? The fact of coming together, working together, even in this crazy time of social distancing, and we was all social distance, but to see so many people come from different backgrounds to community uh, work together. Nick, in particular, you took on board the part of looking after uh, the art, the imagery, the printing. Uh, how did that make you feel? And why did you want to get involved, Nick? Um, it made me feel very, very proud. Um, it's always great to pull a, pull a team together and then uh, run with it, hit those walls, those problems, those issues, and come up with solutions um and you know try and make it a big success which um i think we are beginning to do it right now um so yeah it was um it was a it was a high hurdle to start with but i think um as time's gone on we've worked through the the problems and the issues and we're coming up with some some great solutions and some benefits for the whole of the city which um you know i'm i'm hoping will you know everybody will will see what what's been going on and uh, will benefit from it and in terms of my background um i think this is all my interest in it was born out of basically being in round table for the last 20 odd years and um yeah, that's that's where the whole sort of giving and, uh, and achieving for others has come from fantastic well i know we'll talk about some of the people that have signed a little later on on there but i know whilst the signing was taking place the building that we used in particular was literally, you'd see all these well-known people coming backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, and you'd be like, oh, 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 I'm part of this collective. There's so <laughs> many names. But we'll, we'll come on to those. Uh, Jimmy, obviously, you've uh, got on board with the project as well, and I know you've looked after uh, the tech side and you've put the website together and been supporting with social media. Uh, what's it meant to you, Jimmy? Um, yeah, so... We got involved uh, fairly early on. Uh, Paul reached out, uh, and uh, as many of you guys will know, that you never say no no to Paul. <laughs> yeah, he's very he's very persuasive. No, but I mean, on a, on a genuine note, he's a, he's a great friend. Uh, and when he came to me with this idea, that uh, and, and and actually, by the time he actually reached me, uh, they'd already had some concept art uh, already by that time, and uh, you know, and I was just totally intrigued with what the, what this could mean. Uh, and we talked about how this would help uh, the people of Birmingham, our community in Birmingham as well. Uh, and really, it was a no-brainer for me to get involved. I just wanted to i wanted to be able to deliver value from my side. I was like, well, what, what is it you think I can do for you? Uh, and I'll do it for you. And, and hey. Paul's ask was, you know, we'd like you to get involved as far as the, the social media is concerned. Can you get your social media team to start working with this? Um, and then um, is, if there's anything else. And so we decided to take on the mantle of the website, managing it, hosting it, you know, uh, keeping it updated, uh, enabling people to see what we've been doing as well, the progress, the photography that Ed, Edwin took as well, uh, presented itself on both the social media and onto the website as well. So, yeah, I mean, for me, it, it was a no-brainer. I, I loved every moment of it. I Again, like yourself, I was in awe of all the people that were coming along to see the the artwork coming together and, and amazing actually um going back now to you know june of last year uh, the sun was out we had perfect weather for it as well right yes everybody was adhering to social distancing i must say as well which is fantastic but seeing this artwork right behind us on the screen 
coming together bit by bit was just absolutely amazing and awe-inspiring. And, and I remember feeling at that time that they, I'm being I'm part of something greater than myself. Um, and that's what the Brummie Spirit's about. It's being part of a greater, you know, sort of a greater group. Uh, and I, I just really, really enjoyed uh, that element of it. And now, now the real work starts, I think. We've got this great piece of art, which is going to last 10 years. And then uh, what Paul's just showed you off now is just a small example of uh, what we have as a historical document uh, that will um, sort of record uh, our resilience as a city, basically. Lovely. Paul, can you just uh, hold that lovely piece of artwork up again and we'll do, we'll do a close-up for everybody to, to see on that as well. There we are. That's... Uh... So, so, of course, we all saw that come together. Sharon, what did it mean for you to uh, actually see that artwork change before our eyes over the uh, weeks? And I can't actually remember how long it took now. It just, it just seemed like an excitement to get out and get some air down there. It was exciting. And it was just, um, I think the exciting bit for me was people's reactions to it. And, um, you know, massive testament to Gent 48 because... He's such a perfectionist with this. Like, I just remember it, no matter when you've seen it, he was always touching something up or adding something to it. And, um, and and I think for me, it's not just that moment of watching it come together, but it's what it's meant to people after and what it will mean to the city. So the charities that are going to benefit from, um, you know, the fundraising that's coming out of this. It's children's faces when they see this really colourful artwork and actually creativeness is really appreciated in this city. So I think that's really important. But also for what's going to go into the schools, which is this amazing book as well. So um, everybody can see the journey of the project, but also that's us documenting history. Because in years to come, people will want to know about how did we deal with the pandemic? And we've now got it documented in a really exciting way. Incredible. We'll come over to the book shortly. James, yes. obviously you were there as well. You enjoyed all that experience of it taking place. How does it make you feel, mate? Well, well I was honoured to get the phone call uh, <laughs> to ask to come and sign it because I was saying dignitaries. I've never been called that. I've been called a lot of other things. That's certainly not one of them, I can, I can assure you. And um, Yeah, I think, you know, it was, a, it was an honour, to be honest, because I'm not naturally a, a Brummie. You know, I'm originally from Newcastle, so I'm a complete Geordie at heart, and I will never, ever not be a Geordie, you know, at heart. But I am a Brummie day by day and night, because that's obviously where I live. Um, and it just, you know, I'm a governor of a school, um, so I try to do as much as I can for kids as well. And I just think with everything that was going on, regardless what, you know, personal thoughts are and, and you know, an agreement, the raising money for charity meant a lot, and I love to raise money for charity as much as I can do. And I just thought, you know what? It was sort of different. Out the blue, there was this idea that yeah. was created. We got a phone call to say, come and sign. And I'm like, you know, and I was like, oh, really, you know, really amazed. Came down to have a look at it. There was a, like, like Jimmy mentioned earlier, everyone was social distance. We had drones up in the sky. There was some uh, there was some beers flowing to keep that, 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 that nice, relaxed feel about it. But in a place that would be quite a dull area, which it wasn't an area, all of a sudden sprang to life. And all of a sudden it's like, wow. And the message on that wall is just so clear. Because when you stand there, you sort of get lost a little bit. Yeah. And I'm there speaking to, to Gent, um, you know, and like, so, you know, you know, why did you do it? And what got you behind it? And just, I just got lost in the wall, to be honest. Because there you have this big virus staring down. And then underneath, you just see everything that it's, you know, everyone trying to fight it, you know, and say, you know, just, just do that, you know what I mean? And get away. Um, and yeah, I, I was very, very honored to, uh, to, uh, to sign it. So uh, thank you very much for obviously being asked and um, yeah, uh, lost for words, which is unusual for me, isn't it? I think it's probably a good opportunity for us to say uh, a big thank you to Peter. If he's watching down at Norton's bar as well who really did make sure everybody was looked after. He was a great, great host, I have to say. Was, wasn't he? Just well hydrated. It, it was nice to get a socially distanced beer, which, of course, because he wasn't allowed to open at that point, he uh, he just kept the troops entertained, didn't he? Which was which was great. Um, so uh, then on Meriden Street, Digbeth, for anybody that hasn't been, we'll give that another plug in a bit. Paul, he's not here this evening. 
but Gen 48, get in, uh, get him in, getting Gen 48 on board. How did you find him and what made you choose him? And then how did you get him on board? So I, I, Nathaniel Hanna introduced me to Gen 48 probably three months, six months prior to lockdown. And he was, uh, he's globally known. He's been offered positions, jobs, contracts all across the world. But he's only known in the uh, the graffiti artist, street artist sort of fraternity. Yes. Over here. I'm trying to take him out to wider network to the business, uh, the business sort of uh, networking thing. So I was asked to see if could raise his profile. Lo and behold, COVID comes along. I'm sitting there at home thinking, yeah, but COVID, you're not going to beat us, we're brummies. So it was around about, let's send a message out to the, the virus, to the city, to the world. We're Birmingham, nothing's going to beat us. Uh, you know, obviously we've got an adopted Geordie there, but we can all make our, our allowances for that. <laughs> Back to the plot. Um, so I reached out to Josh and I said, Josh, want you to do something, want you to do a massive big part. I've got a wall. I don't know what we're going to paint. You're going to need to design it. You're not going to get paid for it. It's charity. It's blistering hot sun. It's going to take <laughs> you a while to get it done. It's really hard work. I don't know how I'm going to get you up the wall because it's that high. We're going to need some lifting equipment and things like that. We haven't got any money to pay for any of the paint or anything like that. I'll see if I can raise some money and I'll see what I can do. And he went, you're yeah, right, no problem. I'll <laughs> um, I'll start now and I'll send you some sketches. What do you want? I said, just key workers saying, literally, as James said, putting a finger up, but let's do it in a professional way that we can put it on the school, a, a nunnery sort of wall and a library. And he went, yeah, OK, I'm on it. And then about 12 hours later, draft sketches came across, started to come across to me. Within two days, we were at the wall. The wall all had been rendered. So we had to scrape all the render off the wall. We had to clean all the wall up. There was a window that was there that we had to board up. There was a big sign that we had to bring down. We had Paul Latham from uh, TLC Platforms come yeah. along, somebody who I knew. And he said, I'll give you all the equipment for nothing. So we had thousands of pounds worth of hire. We had that for nothing. And I think it's a key time to say that everybody in this project has donated all of their time totally for free. Many of them have got, you know, many have put their hands in the pockets yeah. as well and supported the project in one way or another. There's a, there's a couple of people who sponsored the paint. There's a couple of people who did this. We reached out to Magic Kang from Nat West, said, Nat West, would you like to get on board? The answer was yes. They sponsored us £5,000, which covered some of the materials that we had. We're still looking for sponsorship to cover that because every penny that's given to us from charitable causes for charitable causes goes to the charities yes. and at this point it's probably important that we talk about the charities so we needed to support some key charities that were doing some amazing things in all around the city so we looked at four charities because it was birmingham we went to the lord mayor's charity and we thought the lord mayor's charity should be the number one charity the conduit to support some other charities now, looking at the pandemic, three charities really, really stood up to the plate, suffered, and had a torrid time. Acorns were clearly financially uh, struggling, were in, were in a bit of trouble. I'm one of the vice presidents of Acorns, and I've been for a while and privileged to get involved in that charity. Close to my heart, but children, terminally ill, you know, needing some care and attention and things like that. Acorns delivers that particularly well. They're having a financial blip, so we wanted to help them out. Side for Fireside, we've got a problem in the city with the homeless people. Yes. And I'll invite Sharon to, to really fill the gaps in on that. The homeless people got a problem, and homeless people through the pandemic was an absolute no-no. So the, st the city stood up to that, you know, stood up to be counted and started to help out there. And then the other one, you know, the pandemic, the bereavements, the amount of people that were coming to end of life, so St Mary's, St Mary's really stepped up to the plate. They put mobile units on there, go out to homes and everything else like that, and just took the uh, the ball by the horns and really delivered a great service. So the four charities we wanted to support, so that's what we said. Everything went through to Just Giving, which kicked off with a few hundred pounds. I think we're at 30 odd thousand pounds now, and our target is probably a couple of hundred thousand pounds. I'll be okay with a couple of hundred thousand pounds. Anything more than that, then we'll be particularly happy. 
And I note that you and James said that you'd be standing in St. Martin's uh, ball ring, absolutely stark naked if we hit quarter of a million quid. That bet <laughs> was uh, rolled out. Uh, rolled out a while ago, so happily challenge you on that point. Quarter million pounds raised, and we'll have a photo of you first standing outside the ball ring with nothing on. <laughs> listen, I, listen I, I, Paul, Paul, if people want to see my hairy arse, and that get, gets us to a quarter of a million, and it's a deal, don't you worry? Oh, oh so is there is the other way around? Okay, well, we can we can with that. <laughs> I, I, around, I was going to say, I've, I've got no issue at all, but as long as it's not <laughs> minus five degrees, otherwise I'll look like an action man. <laughs> <laughs> No, we don't worry about it. Anyway, we're just throwing that in. So we, we 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 just came together as brummies, you know, and we thought we'd do something for the city. We thought we'd take it out there. Lent on Timothy Ison uh, from Colliery Gallery. Lent on a load of people. You know, uh, Dave Smith from Precision Printing in King's Heath was absolutely brilliant. It was so brilliant. The, yeah, so we we talked about limited... Uh, there's quite a little... And stop me when you've had enough. Um, there's quite a little... <laughs> Funny about the print. So I, <laughs> I, <laughs> I took the print. I sent the image to Timothy Eisen. And Timmy said, oh, I will send it out to some critics. Uh, and and, they, and he went, let's have a look at it. And he went, oh, OK. And he kind of stopped. And I was like, oh, that's not very good. And he came back to me and he said, oh, you're looking at quite a few thousand pounds, three to five thousand pounds each, easily. Do a limited print run, 100, 150 of them limited edition, signed by the artist, go out there. And I said, we're looking to get endorsed by 250 dignitaries of the city. And he went, OK, that's never been done before. Going to get 250 dignitaries, going to get a video, we're going to get a book done and all this sort of stuff. And hopefully in a couple of years' time, we'll sell the story to Steven Spielberg. I didn't actually say that, but for the sake of, for the sake of comedy tonight, I thought I'd throw that little bit in. But if Steven is listening... And he can, film in, he can film in our Birmingham studios that we're working on. <laughs> yeah, like it. Great fun. Um, and then we started this. There was a Stephen who arrived part of the way through this project, though. <laughs> and if you look at social media, there was uh, on, top, on top of the... If you look at the print, right, this is an actual photograph. And at the top, you see there's an aerial there. And just about here, all the way through the project, a seagull sat there, flew over. Um, at one time, well, I've got to say, there's no children listening. She kept shitting on my car. And oh. all the cars, he just kept flying past. It suddenly looked like an albatross. So we, this seagull had taken a liking to us. He's now got his own Twitter handle, and he's known as Stephen Seagull. Seagull. <laughs> it's somebody's created. That we're not sure it's 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 all created. Me as well. <laughs> his seagull's got its own Twitter handle, sense of humour, and keeps appearing. And if you look at the book, um, James, have a look at the page where there's Josh at the book. You'll see that the seagull's on top of Josh when Josh is looking around the corner. So this seagull back. kept kept appearing all the way through the project. So that was Stephen Siegel, Stephen Seagull. So nobody, nobody knows that I've got this here yet. Phil doesn't know yet, but uh, we'll get to that point about me having the book here. Uh -huh. Yeah, we'll, well, we'll, we'll come on to the book. I've got that in there. But before we carry on, I, let, let's, ju let's just throw it out there. A couple of news stories today that I picked up on. Just want a few views on them. Um, one of them that seems to be uh, hitting a lot of headlines and was even on this morning, this morning, got to be news, uh, dog theft up by 170% and people are actually being mugged in the street for their beloved family member uh, and canine friend. Dogs, what's your thoughts? Sharon, what's your thoughts on this? It's genuinely a serious thing. I'm hearing it across the city. Um, I know quite a few, you know, know a few people that have been subject to their dogs being stolen out of their gardens and wherever else. I've seen some I've had some emails from constituents with them. Um, Can you help me find my dog? It's actually a thing at the moment. I, you know, I find it terrible that people in the middle of lockdown, and there's so much going on that that's on the top of the priority list for some. But um, yeah, it's definitely happening. It's on a rise. Yeah, well, do dog prices have generally gone up by four or five times the amount, particularly for puppies and designer dogs. Um, what's your thoughts on it, Nick? Well, it's not great, is it? I mean, um, as you can see in the background, there's a little schnauzer 
over that shoulder. Oh, no, that shoulder. Just there. Um, <laughs> oh, on the calendar. Is that a calendar? <laughs> no, it? Yeah, it's a, it's a blackboard, actually. Right, OK. <laughs> um, yeah, no, we've got a schnauzer, and it's, a, it's great to take him out and get some fresh air and get some, yeah, get some uh, thoughts and thinking, clear the head and stuff. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's not great uh, dog theft, but I can understand why in this particular instance in time, people might want a dog and they might want to go out and get some fresh air. So, crazy. Yeah. Paul, any thoughts? On dogs, um, not particularly. I mean, so I have cats and things like that, so dogs are dogs. Um, I'm just concerned about crime rates in the city, so I don't look at the dogs. I just look at the press and I look at knives, gun crimes and um, problems within a challenging environment, challenging city and things like that. Uh, you know, you speak to Dave Thompson, the chief constable, he's got his hands full. Resources are being cut and everything else yeah. like that. We've got some elections around police crime commission now. We've got to release more funds for the police. But what I will oh, say, I think it's... Still... Let's get all political tonight. <laughs> but I think, <laughs> I think it's all about civic responsibilities. I think it's knowing what's right, what's wrong. And it's about getting people young and educating them well about their civic responsibilities, which is part of our project. But I won't oh. steal your thunder, Phil. Let, no, literally just before I came on this evening, I noticed uh, talking about crime rates, and this is probably a, a, a key point that was mentioned, because the, a gang had gone on the rampage and vandalised 60 cars in Bromsgrove as well from smashing them to all, all sorts. So policing, I'm sure, is a, is a key uh, resource there. And I see James has brought his faithful friend. No, in. I've, just, I've just been to Nick's house and nicked it. <laughs> I'll leave it, the dog. <laughs> You're gonna get a decent dog. Go and make a schnauzer. You know what I mean? I think that was the best. Yes, it is, it's cute, so, but it's amazing what you're saying about the dog theft because, like, for this little boy, who's been obviously and you know is uh, is is part you know is, is amazing for me and, and that. And it's, um, I thought, oh, you know what? I'll get him a mate. I'll go and get him a little puppy. And I thought, God, the prices have soared. Yeah. And the problem is when the prices have soared and because of lockdown and people have gone, let's get dogs because a dog's not just for Christmas. And, you know, and it does become one of your, your best friends. But then all of a sudden, like you're saying, the dog theft start because they can make money on it. And it's wrong yeah. because it's, you're, nicking some, you're nicking a piece of someone's family. Because yeah. you know, dogs typically last, on average, 12 to 14 years with you. And uh, you create such a bond. And then, you know, if you think if you've got children and if, you, if you're lonely, and especially now, you think about it, in this lockdown, a lot of loneliness is happening as well. And the only person that, you know, they might be actually getting any sanity from is their dog. And people are actually going around nicking them. It's just wrong. You know, at the end of the day, lock them up. Yeah, it is, it is, Matt, Hancock should be giving, Matt Hancock should be stepping up and giving them 10 years as well. You know what I mean? So uh, let's give them as much as possible. So The thing is, it's, uh, if you steal a dog and you get caught, you only get the same as stealing a mobile phone. You don't get done for kidnapping. <laughs> Seriously, oh my god! I mean, it, it's a serious problem. I mean, uh, I was reading that there was something like eighty stolen dogs rescued in just one weekend by the police. Wow. Right. It's astounding. The thing is, the impact it has on children. I mean, children grow really close to dogs as well, uh, and there's a real connection there. And so it's it's a bit of a it's a bit of a shame. But I understand there's been knife crime uh, alongside that as well. So people have been threatened with knives uh, when it comes to uh, dog napping as well. Yeah, that was, that was the story earlier on. Right, moving on from that then. COVID cases falling. We're now under the uh, one R rate, aren't we? So instead of going into all of that, because obviously we know that's a huge story in itself, what are you looking forward to doing as soon as the release is over? Sharon, I'm going to go straight over to you with this. What is, the, what is the first thing you're looking forward to really getting stuck into or enjoying? Like everybody knows, who knows me well, knows that I'm going to be going out for a drink. I'm going to spend the first seven days trying to work on a habit. And then I will spend it for four days and over it. Um, because COVID, I mean, lockdown has been, lockdown three has been harder than any of the others because of the psychological of going back into it. Um, and those that know me, my portfolio, I've got housing, homelessness, bereavement services. So I'm really at the sharp end of it in terms of the council and the cabinet. Yes. So I am absolutely looking forward to spending a whole week on Bimba. 
Sharon, can I just say it's refreshing to hear someone in the public in the public sector right out there representing people being a normal person. Thank I mean, you. I'm getting hammered. <laughs> well, well, I'll regret it next week when this is on the front page that I've said that I'm getting hammered for a week. And Birmingham Mail, from. you can see it tomorrow morning. Birmingham Mail, <laughs> ex councillor. <laughs> uh, but, but, but I did hear her say responsible drinking. <laughs> to be honest with you, I I dare anyone to say any different to what Sharon's just said. Yeah, we've all learned how to become alcoholics in lockdown. There is a vi everyone has has now created a vice in lockdown. I have to say, do you right? know what will you do? What do you want to do? I'll I'll be joining Sharon. <laughs> it sounds like we'll all be joining Sharon. <laughs> <laughs> now, but but Nick. I'm I'm going to break the trend slightly. Still have a bit of drinking in there, but I will be um, getting out there and playing some hockey. I hope with. Uh, wow. Oh. Um, I always won. Paul, um, it, it concerns me every Friday night having to iron them pleats into your skirt for paid <laughs> up in the following day. All that time wasted. <laughs> Unlucky. <laughs> uh, <laughs> at least I'm not trying to build my muscles up and play play some rugby. Oh, well, well. Yeah, no, I'm really looking forward to getting out there playing hockey again. Um, looking Love forward to that. And then obviously having the social side of it and having a beer afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes, so, uh, or whatever, net, uh, whatever you have, playing netball what? or hockey or whatever what it is that you play. It's got to be networking, hasn't it? Networking with a drink. Um, I th I'm going to be in Hotel de Van Friday afternoon, um, the very first Friday afternoon, and I'm probably going to end up at Norton's Bar till, can I say, six o'clock in the morning? Hang uh, on a minute. Hang on, Paul. How do you know we're going to be allowed out on a Friday afternoon? Why well, is it'll not? be the first available Friday afternoon yeah. uh, to do Yeah, that. James. The first of maybe Sharon and probably with a two hundred odd probably's all queuing up there having a drink and things like that. Um, I'm looking forward to getting that back out, and I've got to be honest, working, getting the economy going, making things happen, and just picking up the bits and getting on with it. Got to pick the bits up now, and we've got to make things work. So there's a bit of get out there, see everybody, but actually I want to roll my sleeves up and start some businesses, some manufacturing businesses, and get all of these going and things like that. But. That's the grown-up approach, I'm afraid. Exciting. Did, dare I ask you, James? Um, well, you can ask, certainly. I thought our, our first thing is we'll be doing our first live real random and raw, supporting <laughs> our friends <laughs> in, of the the industry. And uh, I'm sure um, the guys at Craft and uh, About 8 will be more than happy for us to be filming their live on a Friday evening in return for a free uh, eight-course uh, meal. By an amazing Get the whole show from there, from about eight. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, no, I think I'm a serious, I'm a serious no, no, no. Like Paul said, look, I'm already supporting the economy because I'm already still working. I, I don't get to have a break during all this, but um, yeah, I think the social side's quite important. I'm missing, you know, a lot of the, the the interaction with people because I was so used to it. Obviously, going into this, which I think is uh, is, is going to be great, but I'm also a bit nervous on that at the same point because. As soon as it finishes, I want to be the first person to rush out and just go, guys, give me a hug. And we're going to be, yeah. obviously, we're going to be told, don't touch, don't come anywhere near, but you can sit at a table and have a meal opposite each other. Yeah. On, but then you won't be allowed to drink alcohol at the same time, likely. So it's going to be, you know, we're going to be let off with a lot of restrictions, aren't we? We can see that. But, you know, I think it would be just great to go in, hopefully just go and see some family again. Um, and, mm. and then you know, all five minutes because then they'll do my head in, and then I can get to the local restaurant and uh, you know, we can have a nice meal and uh, a few little uh, a few little drinks or done, done, yeah, done your family duty, and then back to uh, going and having some social interviews. What about you, Phil? Because we never ask you, what about you? What about you, Phil? Do, do, do you know what? what I don't about you, to Phil? Him, but uh, probably exactly the same. I can't wait to actually, as you know, I'm a bit like many of you here, I'm a social. Networker, I love getting about into our beautiful. Our phone calling already, so get out there. I was thinking, see, look, there's people trying to book in already. That's how sociable I am. Uh, yeah, to get out into our beautiful city and to just enjoy some of them amazing venues, uh, depending whether it's warm or cold, outdoor space, indoor space, and just to be able to interact and have a good drink i just want somebody to wait on me instead of having to look after myself in the kitchen and bring me some food bring me some drinks and actually really appreciate a quality service not saying that my quality service 
isn't quality. Yeah. You're doing it for yourself, aren't you? <laughs> well, tell, I'll tell you what, you know, before, we get, we, before we get back on to art for charity, very important, let's do Jimmy, favourite restaurant in there in the city. Ooh. Mm. Oh, oh, you're putting me on a the spot there. Um, okay, my last favourite meal was at eight. So, so political, that one. Nick? Penel's. <laughs> Paul? Uh, I'm going to get, well, I've got a few. I have nine all over the place. I'm going to name Clint Penel's. He's brilliant. Wilderness. You only get one, Paul. Don't, don't cheat. Don't yeah, cheat only wilderness. one. Wilderness. That'll you do. Know, <laughs> I can't give you one because I might not get invited to the rest if I do. <laughs> this is so political <laughs> now. Let's not, let's not forget James Wong on a night like tonight. Chinese well, New Year. Oh, yeah. 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 So I never do a self a bit of self promotion here, but my la my latest uh, bullshits is getting distributed right around Birmingham at the moment. And I have to admit, my favourite Chinese restaurant. See, I could be a make. I could be a politician here. Favourite Chinese one happens to be Mr. Wong, who is uh, featured in our bull bull sheets. And I'll all due respect. He's given one of these to every takeaway that's been there uh, going out from tonight. All five hundred. So well done, James. God bless him. And uh, happy and it's you, you know, you just say something actually in terms of people like James. And that's just another example of what Birmingham is all about. So whilst in the middle of a pandemic, he's still out there feeding the masses. And yeah. also the amount of things that he does behind the scenes to support charitable causes is absolutely unbelievable. And no matter what, you know, the business market's like at the moment, he always puts a smile on. And I think that's what we've all tried to do, really. And we need more of that. So I think um, after COVID, we need to really wrap our arms around some of the good people of the city, um, not just for the networking, but actually for the genuine friendships that come through it. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know, Sharon, spot on, because James is drive for the city. And there's other people out there as well. But I know James personally, like many of us. And what he's done for hospitals, supporting, you know, key staff out there supplying food. He's got a community centre. He's been making sure he looks after the community all whilst having two new children and his beautiful wife and being able to look after those and keep his businesses going. And as we know, he had to say farewell to Chung Ying Central, um, which was his baby within the city. But he's still got the lovely Chung Ying restaurant. And I know he was going to ask me which was mine. I think Chung Ying ticks a big box for me. Uh, it yeah, depends it what mood, and I'm sure we're all the same. It depends what mood you're in of where you're going to go. So we can all have, you know, a Pennells or a Wilderness or an Adams or something like that. Ooh, that's, 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 that's a dangerous that, comment. That, that, that top end, and, you know, we know what we're going to get. The same with, you know, about eight incredible um, experience that we had there. But then you've got other places that you'll go to that sometimes you're a bit more relaxed or you just want to have a bit more of a drink and you want to just chill out with friends um, so, so there's so many choices, uh, but well, James, we're, you know, we're lucky in Birmingham, by the way, might, might just say, we're very lucky in Birmingham that we've got the choices that we have. Yes. And we have the most Michelin star restaurants anywhere outside of London, by the way, as well. Absolutely right. so we've got some incredible hospitality venues, uh, high end and, uh, you know, for us, uh, other folks as well. Right. So we're, we're, we, we, we should be very, 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 very happy about that. And we should support hospitality when we come out of lockdown as well, massively. Absolutely. Eat out every night, support hospitality. Let's have a bit of a bang. I'm going to put on a few times. A few more times. <laughs> I, I, I'm in for that. So, look, you did mention, obviously, James is working hard and many others in the city. We're celebrating the year of the Golden Ox. So, uh, Tong Hai Fat Choi is the uh, okay, happy right. year. No, I'm hosting the Chinese New Year Festival, uh, which I do each year for the Chinese community, which I love. But uh, what's your thoughts on uh, Chinese New Year? Year of the Ox. Does anybody know anything about Year of the Ox? I was born in the Year of the Rat, so <laughs> I can't comment. <laughs> well, maybe that's, there's certain things you should say online, and that's not one of them, mate. I can't <laughs> you hey, apparently, very auspicious and very lucky, by the way, I just said, you know, depending on, depending on the culture. You know. I do know that those are sort of born under the year of the ox are supposed to be people who are quite conscientious and um, inspire people, bring them along, um, quite strong people. And I think that's something, those type of characteristics 
are things that we definitely are going to need in 2021 and um, to get us through the rest of the year and kind of, you know, where we've been from and to where we need to go. Yeah, uh, you, you, spot on, Sharon, because there's a lot about uh, community, creativity, supporting each other and successes with Year of the Ox. So I think we're going to need that for 2021 as we come out of this. Yeah, it's auspicious, strong, reliable and conscientious. I think that's a good that's a good way to describe how we want to be out, coming out of uh, lockdown. Hardworking, one word, there you are. There you are, hardworking. Isn't that two words? <laughs> not, I, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't do that well in uh, a lot of my exams. English was one. Hard working is one word. I can assure you. <laughs> it's, I think there's a hyphen in there somewhere, but uh, yeah, that's one sure. word or two words. <laughs> Good. Look, oh, oh, it's great to have you all here. Let's go back. Look, we've had somebody asking where can they get the book. So let's talk about World Book Day, which takes place on the fourth of March. So tell us about what you're going to do with the book here. Who wants to uh, deliver on that, Paul or Sharon? Sharon does. Okay, thank you. Um, so World Book Day, um, many people would have an amazing book. I think there was 100 copies, but guess what? It sold out in over a week, just over Christmas. So well done to all the brothers three that three bought days, the book. Three days, three days, Sharon. Three days, three days, three days. There you go. It's sold out. But... We are looking at edition two, and there's going to be some new exciting stuff that's going to be in there. Can't tell you about it because it's at the moment. But um, there's some really great additions to the second one. Um, I'm actually going to buy the second edition as well as having the first edition. So if you have the first one, you can still buy it. But what we are planning on doing is we're planning on donating one of these books to every single school in the city because we think that children should have wow. be able to access a copy and read it. And it's not just telling the story of um, um, forwarding unity, but it's also got the bit about the dignitaries in there because we think that young people need to learn more about the civic pride and what it means because we've really shown it over COVID. So um, that's one of the stuff, some of the stuff we're going to be doing. And I'll let one of the others tell you about the rest. I can remember. I can maybe fill in where you can get the book from. Um, so you can visit the website, which is www.artnumber4charity.co.uk, uh, um, and you can uh, you can actually buy uh, uh, the second edition book now uh, and reserve your copy. Uh, and like um, Sharon just said, there's a lot of detail uh, that's in the second edition that's not in the first edition as well. Uh, but again, what's amazing about this book is it, it sort of um, tells a story about what went on and how we got to where we got to but also profiles each and every single uh dignitary and you know who they are what they've done and it's a great i think it's a great way for schools uh to educate the kids about uh the aspiring people that we have in this great city of ours as well so yeah please get your copy and if you've got a first edition the second edition because i'm getting it i'm going to get a second edition as well um is going to be a great uh, uh book to to have and to hold on for a few years as well can I just uh, add a few comments on to that? So yeah, please do, Paul. The book is going to go into every library that's in Birmingham that we've got left, that the council haven't closed. Just raise that point. It looks <laughs> as if we've got 30-odd <laughs> libraries, but the book is going to go in there. It's going to go into 460-odd schools. It's going to be a whole package, 12 months package. So the 250 dignitaries, and I noticed looking at the list, Jackie Cummins is online. Peter Higgs is online, there's a couple of other people who have signed a book, but all be invited to go into schools, into one of the 460-odd schools, at least two or three times during the 12 months. Talk about role models, talk about some responsibilities, talking about who they are, giving some idea of opportunities to kids. The younger children, sort of the nursery schools, will be having the, the mural without all the colours in there, so they'll be able to paint it in, colour it in. We'll also be creating things like jigsaws. We're creating a video that's going to go out there if we still have videos. Are they videos or just uh, <laughs> footage to go out there? Cole Chin was involved in it. He's going to do some stuff there. We're going to have Phil Aldershaw, people like that. That's Never going to be there it. hosting something <laughs> like that. Talking about the city, talking about what we're going to do. The video is going to go out there. The book itself has gone into the British Library. So it's been included wow. in the British Library. 
we've got a an embargo on not announcing what I'm just about to announce. So I'm going to give you an exclusive now. Oh, we've got an exclusive on Real Random and Raw. <laughs> because we're going to talk to James about his opportunity of buying something, but we'll come back to that. Give James a minute or two to think about it. We had uh, a reason why the prints were delayed. And we were waiting for, love him or hate him, he is the Prime Minister, the Prime Minister Boris Johnson to sign the prints. And just to level things out, just for Sharon, we've got the leader of opposition, Sir Keir Starmer as well. So both wow. of those have signed the prints. They've also signed some books. We've got a dedication from the two of them to go into the book. The second edition of the book is probably, and I'm looking at Nick, going to have 30 to 40 more pages in there. Part of the team who, do, who didn't go in there, there's people like Edwin, the photographer, there's people like Paul Latham, who gave us all the equipment. You know, there's a whole host of them, isn't it? Home yeah. Surveys, yeah. All of these people that have supported us to go in there. We're also going to announce uh, the ambassadorial program. So the ambassadorial program is going to be around, at the moment, it's eight ambassadors. And I'll go through them uh, one by one throughout the next sort of half an hour, an hour, and the reasons why we've chosen them. There's a whole Civic Pride program that's going to be around that. So we're going to take the books into the schools. We're going to speak to the schools. We're going to get the children to raise money for their charity of choice. So we're installing an idea of charitable sort of mindset as early as we can in children. We're yes. going to ask them to raise potentially more than £50, but any money is great for a charity of their choice to just go out there. And then we're going to take four, three to four children's faces from the, the school and then you've got the shield, which is the coat of arms, the civic coat of arms. Sharon will correct me if I've got the terminology wrong. For the city, which is the, the forward, we're going to create a mural of all these children's faces. We're looking to use 2022 faces in the mural uh, behind the, the city coat of arms. There's a bit of a there's a bit of an idea of exactly why we're using 2022. You can work that out for yourself. And we're going to take that forward uh, for the following year. So the program itself, 12 months building up to that, then the mural of the children's face is going in there. And it's all about the city. It's all about the coat of arms. It's all about pride. All about being proud to be Brummie. And I'll underline the, the tagline that we got, which was Brummie Mindset. Did I miss anything out there, Sharon, Nick? I was just going to say, I think one of the exciting things about that, there's many exciting things, is the legacy. So it's not only capturing that moment in time, but the legacy. So so getting a, a lot of these dignitaries to go out there to schools, to get the message into schools, get the books into schools. Uh, what, <clears throat> what was really interesting, Phil, was that um, we reached out to Boris Johnson, and, and I've got to thank Sharon and a few of the other politicians in the city and said, would you mind, could you could you sign our print? The answer from the politicians was, yeah, no problem at all. So we thought we'd push it. So we asked for her, <laughs> we've asked for photos, you know, we've asked for the video, then we've asked for an insertion in the book, a forward from the Prime Minister's going in the book and things like that. And we sent oh, yeah. him one of the, the prints. So the large signed prints with 250 signatures on, which are going to be available now for sale uh, as of next week, a thousand pounds and bearing in mind that they were kind of valued at three to five thousand pounds we've got some wet sign prints that we've got there that were signed hand signed as well they're going to be uh, we sent one to boris one of the smaller prints he's now including that in number 10 oh so my they've God. got their own private gallery so it's going to be displayed Amazing. in the art gallery in the number 10 downing street so that's the first for us. Oh, brilliant. The book's the, in, the inclusion for the World Book Day. It's going to go into the British Library. We've been given some space in the Birmingham Main Library, so we're going to display one of the prints. So we've already had a donation of the print to the city, which was uh, by Matt from Oxford Home Learning. So he's given us a print. That'll be displayed in there with a glass case, with a couple of the books signed by some of the dignitaries and things like that to go out there. I'm going to shut up and let somebody else speak, but I want to talk about how we selected the 250 dignitaries as well. 
Well, well before you, you do, Paul, yeah. I mean, can I jump on this? Because it wouldn't be real random and raw unless I asked the question like this. Which politician didn't want to help? Um, there's 10. We've got to be careful because the, there's 10 uh, MPs for the city. I didn't want to go too wide, and we spoke to the uh, the whole team, and we reached out to the 10 MPs of the city. All of them agreed to sign. There was only one or two of them who didn't sign, and they were for reasons of shielding and availability and things like that. But I've got to say, the whole cabinet from Birmingham Council took time out of their personal time to come and sign. So the whole of the cabinet did it. All of the MPs did it. And we had a few other dignitaries and MPs that were involved in various other activities. Alex Yip, who's a Conservative um, councillor, was involved in the project and has always been supportive in the city. You know, and potentially may be our first Chinese origin. Lord Mayor, at some point, slight plug there, was involved. It would be great, wouldn't it? I think. Yeah, lovely. Yeah, but I've got to say, all the politicians were, were, were very favourable and supported us. There's only one or two people who uh, who wouldn't sign, you know, who couldn't sign, who gave specific reasons, <laughs> you know, and, and it probably wouldn't be fit and appropriate for me to mention who they were. You can't but mention we, them, Paul. Can you just say what their reasons were, why they couldn't? <laughs> I think, yeah, as you said, it was their shielding, so... No, the one, the one, dig, the one dignitary didn't want to sign because he didn't want to be one of two hundred and fifty. Oh, charming! Mm. So we told him to fuck off. Oh, oh, one, two, one. <laughs> yeah, we did. <laughs> we did. But I've got to say, the, the, don't the forget this is real random and raw, Paul. Nothing, <laughs> nothing, nothing <laughs> to hold back. The politicians, the politicians <laughs> in the city. We're all behind us. We're, we're 100%. The council have backed us to get the books out into the schools. There's Brilliant. a whole civic programme around that. So the council have been particularly good to us. The MPs have been good. So I got a phone call to say, uh, how have you managed to get four MPs to come and sign your print? Apparently, you've got four MPs coming one Friday. And I said, well, we haven't got four. We've got seven. And, they, and he, the person who said that to me just swore at me and just hung up on me. And he said, I can't <laughs> believe what, you've Paul, managed, you've managed to do that. Because, like, we've got, you know, you've done, obviously, the team and yourself have done such a great job. And when the country is so divided at the moment, you know, nationally and locally, and everyone's got their own opinions, to actually get people to come together for such a great cause is a massive achievement just in itself, even I can say. And I'm very political, so, you know, a great achievement. So, hats off. Paul's great at that, by the way. I mean, like, you know, Paul is great at getting people to work together. And that's what I've found yeah. with him. You know, he's, he's, a, he's a great guy. He's a great friend as well. And, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're um, privileged to have him lead uh, the Art for Charity, by the way, as well. So, I, I, I know I, I don't want to be saying it in a way that's like he's here right now, but he uh, doesn't get the <laughs> praise. Andy Street, Liam Byrne, you know, would jump, would straight on it. Anybody that uh, we had difficulty getting hold of, I just reached out to Sharon. Sharon's brilliant because yeah. she sends an email and people just go like, oh, Sharon, 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 Sharon sent me an email. I'm going to respond and things like that. Sharon, in terms of um, the legacy and what it's doing, I know because of your background and what you're doing at the moment to tell your your story. I don't know, have you mentioned that at all moving forward? No, but, no, no. No? Okay, what, what, what you're doing to support communities as well, how important is it for you to, to benefit schools like that? It just means so much because, you know, there's, you know, the size of Birmingham, it's the biggest local society area in, in Europe. And there's going to be some people that can afford to get the book, let's be honest. But there's going to be many children that just would not have access to this and wouldn't be able to afford it. Um, some people are so far. I mean, we're having a book in Central Library. But, you know, if you live in Northfield or somewhere else, you're not going to be able to access it. So it means a great deal for the kids to be able to have a part of it. Um, and also for me, um, you know, Speaking to some of the charities and the people that are involved in some of the work, especially around the homelessness and the bereavement services, 
this has been a breath of fresh air for some of us. Yeah. Um, it's kind of, you know, it's been like an escapism in some ways, shape or form. Um, and I just think it's so important to document history. I've just got a big thing about documenting history. And it's very rare that you get to document history in such a creative, fun and vibrant way that brings everybody together, regardless of their political colour, regardless of their sector, regardless of their class. Um, you know, race, whatever it is, we just had this unified thing that brought us together, which was the unity. So it just means a great deal to me um, as a Brummie, not as a councillor, but as a Brummie. Um, but also I know what it's going to mean to the city in the wider context and what people are saying about us. To think that Keir Starmer and Boris have signed this, you know, they are that's national recognition for something that happened here in Birmingham, in the middle of Digba. So I just think it's a amazing it is amazing and you know what birmingham uh, i what paul will tell you now i've always said it for a while birmingham does not shout about itself enough and sometimes gets hidden behind various other cities now and, and this is one thing that i've you know when I, when I got asked i was so proud obviously to sign but it's shown itself that birmingham is an amazing city and it can do amazing things when people do come together and this is one project that's shown that many others can come along from it. And hopefully this has started something that's going to be amazing for the future for not just, you know, us, us dinosaurs in the industries, but for the young kids that are looking, looking up. Going to the I think um, if I can come back as well, one of the prints is going to go in a museum. The museum are going to dedicate a, a piece and a, and a, and a, a display around how Birmingham coped with COVID. Now, I think we did it in a positive, supportive Ooh, way. Oh, you're not leaving us anything for our press release. This is live, raw and frisky or something, was it? I, don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I, would, I would love to know what's in your room where the frisky's on there, Paul. <laughs> It was something good, other anyway. I tell you what, we have got though, James. We've got ten wet sign prints that carry a massive, massive value. With all of these the dignitaries that have signed, that are valued at quite a lot of money. Now you did indicate once that you might be interested, or potentially, if we put your arm up your back, you might be interested. I don't, in, I don't think he needs his arm put up his back. In I think. Purchasing, <laughs> purchasing one of those to support that, you know, and potentially monies that, you know, sponsorship monies and all that sort of stuff that we raise takes this project forward to every kid in uh, in Birmingham and things like that. Well, just so, to confirm, well, just to confirm before, yeah. before before people think that's why I got allowed to sign the book or sign. No, the not at all. No, 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 no. I, I said this as soon as I turned up and looked at it. I went, "What do I need to do?" I'm so impressed. I need to help. I uh, I asked you to sign the book, and and we can get onto the 250 dignitaries as to why, who, where, and there. So the idea that was set, we sat between all of us as to who the 250 people should be. And it's not just about who the dignitaries are because of title, because of office or anything else like that. We actually look at what had happened. So we looked at a load of senior people, people that are in, you know, the the autumn yeah. of their lives, that have done the work, that have done everything, that have created Birmingham. So there's some 70, 80-year-old people that I have looked back. John James was a guy who sold um, his, uh, his books, his China bookshops took a quite a bit of money and then personally opened the College of Law, financed the College of Law himself, kept it going, kept it, uh, set it all up. So Birmingham could have a College of Law, you know, and things like that. He did that at a generosity of his own pocket. That's incredible. People forget these things. There's a whole list of people. Paul Sabapathy, you know, he was the first Asian Lord Lieutenant and has done so much for the city. Rashid Gatrad is a professor of paediatrician. Uh, that flies out every weekend and has done that for 20 years and giving up, you know, doing hundreds and hundreds of operations around the world in war zones. Only two years ago, it was in Syria. I could hear bombs going off. It was almost similar to the old MASH show. If you're old oh, enough, yeah. you'd, you'd have recognised that's what he was doing. I called him and there was noises. And I'm like, what are you doing? I'm doing an operation in Syria on a child that's been uh, damaged. He did that. All of these people that have got stories to tell that have created a fabric of Birmingham, 
then you look at the people now who are in office that are doing things to senior people, you know, chairman of KPMGs and all of those sort of civic there, banks uh, and that type of thing. Some leading shiny lights. We went out to all the uh, the hospital trusts. So we've got, we've got the chairperson or, you know, we've got the CEO of the five NHS trusts. We've reached out to some doctors, some people that are really on the front line making a difference. We had a nurse whose first night on duty was when the lockdown was announced. She literally left BCU qualified and went on duty just as they announced COVID lockdown. That was the first day. We had police officers, ambulance people, you know, they came there. We had fire officers that had come there. We had all of these support. Then we had a mindset of who's going to lead the city, who's going to shape the city. So it was the future faces, which tend to sit around the 20 to 30-year-olds. This is the next generation are really going to lead the city. Paul, I I couldn't agree more. I think what some people have done has been absolutely amazing. And I think, you know, Mm. it's we all we all look, you know, this is real random and raw. Before we go on, me and you are bantering away, and we all have our own opinions, you know, of what's right, what's wrong. But one thing that will never divide any of us is the frontline staff. Yeah. All, have our, all have our hearts. They're the ones who are just doing their job because that's what you know. That's what they went into it for in the first place was to help people. The NHS, you know, we're all there just to get help people get well again, and that's it. Yeah. They're not involved in the politics and the rest of it and the decision making. But you're exciting news. So what are you offering? Come on, let's have uh, let's uh, let's have this on live. Come on, let's 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 see what you're offering. What are we offering? We have 10 limited edition wet sign prints, right, that we would look we would look to raise no more than a, a minimum of £10,000 each for these 10 prints. Now, Fantastic. These, these are valued at considerably amount, a lot more money. Let me, you ever think about that, James, and I'll come back to you. Let me finish who the dignitaries are, why we chose them, and then I've got something else for you as well. So uh, we've got uh, Paul, just before you go into that, for anybody watching at any point, uh, a yeah. wet sign print is the original signature print of this artwork before it went to print to sell out the other copies. So this yeah. is the original signatures of all 250 dignitaries on these prints. Just yeah, added yeah. The, uh, the, the Prime Minister, Sir Keir Starmer, and um, the Lord Mayor as well. So um, we're about uh, getting seven, uh, I think. Uh, and not forgetting that Gen Forty Eight has signed every single print and yeah. has numbered yeah. them as well. To do that. So before we come back to James and we do this, so we got the future faces, the 20, 30 year olds, then we reached out to the apprentices. So some of the apprentices, so I I I judge the bone apprenticeships of the year. Yes. Somebody came in front of me, was absolutely inspirational, telling me that she's going to change the world, going to uh, run the country, change the world. And I actually think you probably will do with that mindset. She was invited to join it. You know, then we, we recognised some of the athletes, some of the sporting people in the city. Fortunately, we managed to avoid footballers and people like that, just fake reality, or, you know, reality stars and things like that. But we reached out to Ian Bell to sign the print and things like that. We reached out to some artists. Then we went out and we got, uh, who else did we get, Nick? Carrie Lawler. Yeah, Carrie Lawler. Yeah, it was a young, inspirational lady. But how old is she now? 17 years old and she's part of the NASA team, NASA wow. development team and things like that. We then went out and we, we really tried our hand with the religious leaders. I wanted to reflect the diversity along the religion of the city. Yes. So the six religious leaders that are under the combined authority that came together to, to really separate and spread the word. Uh, we asked them all to sign it. Um, they all agreed, come forward and signed it. And somebody said to me, the last time that they all signed a document and agreed anything was around when the Magna Carta was signed. <laughs> so to actually get them all on board to sign it, <laughs> they did that. So we got that, Chief Constable. We had David Jamieson, Police and Crime Commissioner. Uh, Sharon, who else did we have on there? Um, Beverly Lindsay, True Powell, um, yeah. Nathan Sabrina Dennis, um, yeah. Andy Street, 
John Crabtree. There's a whole host of people. Yeah, yeah. So we think we shaved it up quite well and got the right people in here into that. Let's see where we go. Fantastic. Okay, should we go back to James? <laughs> All right. So you know me, I don't like to mess around. I like to get straight to the point. You know, there's only one print I'll be interested in if we're doing this live. Yeah. Which will be number zero. <laughs> okay, so if I made z number zero print, the very first hand signed wet print. Hang on, you can't have, you can't have a zero print. It'd be number one. No, 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 it no. won't. No, it won't. The very first print, which is the artist print, the artist fruit, which is zero zero one. Then it goes into number one, and it goes up from that. Um, could be available. What's the price? Well, I know you've already got a few offers of 10K already. Yeah, that's right. So I'll offer 10,000 and a penny. <laughs> you can do better than that, can't you? I we, am. Don't deal in, we don't deal in pennies, do we? <laughs> no, I couldn't even get around with that. Yeah, Come on, this is live. This is live, raw and risky. It's, it's, it's real, rather than raw. <laughs> Remember, James, property business, as you said right at the start, is doing really well when everybody else is quiet. You've been really busy. What a great opportunity to pay 11000 No chance. Do you want that decent reference for that new job you're going for? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, this is in front of your audience. This is live raw. Make, make it easy and call it quits. I'll give you 15k right now for 0 0.01 print. James, can I, can I remind you what you said to me when uh, you signed your print in Castle Fine Art? Uh, uh, very little because I had a mask on. <laughs> it, was, it was all muffled, I'm sure. Fair enough. What about what about James? What about this? How about if you paid twenty thousand pounds and I put you on to the book as the main sponsor for the uh, the program to go into the schools? That's a cheeky offer. I think he's going to snap your hand off. And it means that you're, you you will go around all of the schools, all the libraries and everything else like that. You all you can manage that part of the project to go out there. I will appoint you as an ambassador. It's 17,000 pounds. Sorry, James. It's 17,000 pounds you'll have a deal and I'll personally go out and raise more, more money with all my contacts for the rest of it. Wow. 17,000? Yeah. And that's without the sponsorship of the uh, the schools. You'll add that on top at some point from everybody else. No, no, no. For the, <laughs> deal, for the deal that you've just announced, I'll give you the 17K and then I'll go out further on my own time to make sure we raise a lot more money on top of that. And you know what I can do when I put my mind to it for charity, so. Everybody, are we happy with that? I'm happy with that one. I'm it's so generous of you, James, honestly. James, generous James. Thanks. I'm telling you now, if Boris and Kieran are on it, I don't want it. I'm only jo I'm not joking. <laughs> <laughs> I just want me paying them 17k. <laughs> Congratulations, well done, James. Well done, James. Thank you. Well done, James. It's it's good, it's good job this is not recorded. <laughs> James, can I, just say, can, I, can I just say that's incredibly generous of you, by the way. 17,000 pounds what you're do donating, but you. you I mean, I'm sure you realise what that £17,000 will do. It will go towards a charity like the Lord Mayor's Charity that supports local communities. They give uh, monies to small charities that cannot raise money right now in this pandemic. The money will also go to a um, St Mary's Hospice, which looks after people with life-limiting uh, conditions, including acorns as well. These hospitals do amazing work in helping bereaved families, you know, supporting them, um, and also with CIFA as well, with the homeless. So that £17,000 will go a long, long way, I promise you. Thank you. There's a reason why I'm wearing pink tonight. It wasn't just for Phil. As you know, one of my uh, uh, one of my charities is very much related to uh, to two different types of cancer. Uh, mm -hmm. One of them is on this arm, and it's, uh, it's a bit faded now. The other one, obviously, is uh, breast cancer, because... Uh, my mum uh, had it and uh, recovered, uh, obviously, thank God. Um, and obviously, St. Mary's, we raised a lot of money earlier this year when uh, a lot of charities weren't worse. And look, I don't mind doing it. I think this has been a great cause from the very start. I was very touched when I first turned up to it and, uh, and looked at it. And it's one of them where you turn up and you can see 
and look, I'll, I might speak out of turn here, but I turned up and I saw everyone really having a great time and looking at it going, oh, this looks amazing. And it wasn't until I took a few steps back and just had five minutes to myself to look at it and sort of bigger picture of what this actually could be moving forward. And if you look in our lifetime, apart from Paul, because he's, he's too old, is there's not much has happened in our lifetime apart from the internet got created. And kids these days aren't interested in that because they're so busy on TikTok and Instagram and, and everything else. So the financial crash was quite easy because it was a finance thing and it got recovered. But this has destroyed lives and this has really changed the way we're going to live moving forward. And when I'm a bit older and hopefully I'll have grandkids and they'll go, granddad, you know, what's happened in your lifetime? You know, I'm not going to be the same as my granddad who had the war and everything else to go yeah. through. It's going to be, it's going to be COVID. Without a shadow of a doubt, it will be the pandemic that made us literally take all our freedom away. There was over 100,000 deaths in this country, over a million in the uh, in the world. And uh, that will be uh, our legacy, sort of not our legacy, but, you know, our our memories of what really changed in the world. So, yeah, thank you. Um Glad to be allowed to uh, to bid on this live. Bit shocked to be honest. It's uh, I think I'll be having more than one bottle now after that. But uh, <laughs> I, can't, I can't have my box, I can't have my box at the football club this year anyway. Yeah, so that's you can, uh, there will just, definitely be a bottle from myself as a thank just, you to you as well. Yeah, and just thank from you, me, James. It's really thank appreciated. Thank yeah, really. just from me, I really appreciate James what you've done. Um, Seventeen thousand plus everything that we're going to raise and things like that. We're going to raise a lot of money that should make a lot of difference. Just to underpin what Jimmy says around the charities in Birmingham, you know, when we're reaching out to everybody else to do this, the book is going to be back on sale fairly soon, you know, and that the book's going out there. Quite a lot of the book is going to go to profit now because we've had a good uh, doctor print has reduced the cost of the, of the book. Oh, yes, Andy, Andy, but Dr. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, Dr. Print have been brilliant. You know, they've reduced the cost of the books. The first books that we produced were around like 19, 22 pounds each. So there was only a small amount of that that went to uh, to so Paul, uh, all this profit to Paul, charity. Just add this one onto Dr. Prince because uh, I got given this for tonight. So you can add that to his bill. <laughs> no problem at all. <laughs> now, Dr. Print have reduced it. So we're going to be making easily over 10 pounds from each book that's going to go to charity that's going to make a difference. Right. And the main point that I want to make as well, it's a book. It's not digital. It's an actual book that, that children can hold, that can they can touch, and they can pass it between themselves. They can go back to reading books. It's not all online. They can talk about it. They can get involved in a project. They can do things. You know, but it's a book that was designed by, New, uh, by Moo from... Uh, Sorry, designed by Nick from Moo Design. So, you know, I want to say thank you to him as well and things like that. Paul, it's important we get at, these books. at a later stage, will the book go digital at all? Obviously, once the fundraising has been uh, complete, we, will it ever go digital? Will it be online or is this something that will always be have, Yeah, so if you go to the website, you'll see the video, the Lady Sanity video that, that, that was all put together. You can buy the yes. prints and you can buy the books and you'll also see there's the digitalization of the 250 dignitaries as well as all the other messages that's on there. So the book in itself over the next few weeks, and that's because the students from BCU are supporting us, will go live on, uh, on uh, our website. Amazing. That doesn't stop everybody from buying the books though. So we're pushing everybody into books. But the digitalization will be there, and there'll be a book there that we can start signing and make comments just to capsulize, uh, to crystallize our thoughts, individual thoughts about during this, you know, really awful time. Lovely. Thank, thank you for that. And of course, everybody that's uh, tuned in, go over to wwwart number 4 charity. Well, I would just like to say, I've just had a text straight away going, don't forget, James, that's uh, tax deductible for charity. So I'm like, cheers for that for the accountant. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's a good reminder to everybody else oh, yeah. as well. But that's a valid point. It's a valid point, actually. Yeah. When you're giving to charity, so yeah. people who yeah. are thinking, actually, it's a tax deductible expense. So dig deep if you can and yeah. start buying those prints. It's all going to a good yeah. Just to announce that the, the prints are available to buy online now. 
uh, although we're officially launching it next next Friday, I believe Paul announced as well. But you can buy the non-wet prints, um, which are a thousand pound a piece. Just remember what that one thousand pound does. You know, it helps so many people in our community in Birmingham. Yes, These are the charities that have not been able to go out and raise money like they usually are able to. They've not been able to do that, and they've still continued to uh, offer the services and support those families and communities out there as well. So you can log on to the website, buy the uh, the print, and we will have a ceremony where you can either have it delivered to you or we will uh, um, hand present it to you at an event that will be presented later on in the year when lockdown restrictions are um, allow us to do that as well. So please just log on, even if it's to look at the moment, uh, to see what you're buying. But um, as James just said, it is tax deductible. So if you're buying it through your business, it's a great it's a great way to support the work that we're doing with these charities. Okay, so please log on and have a look. Okay, yeah. so, look, we're coming we're coming to the end, everybody. It's been uh, this has been great, just so smooth, so nice to have so many people supporting such a great cause. Before we bring it all to a wrap, I, let's just go through each of you about your thoughts. Um, for this project, what you want to see moving forward. And also, as we move into 2021, what you want to aspire to have happiness, I suppose, moving into this new year as things start to change. Uh, can we go over to Sharon, please? Oh, Bill and he's going to start with me. Um, <laughs> so, I, so I think for me... Um, uh, the one thing that I want to see for this project is for it not to end, um, other than the fact I've made some great friends on it. But um, the fact that it's doing so much for the city and it really is for me, leading into the Commonwealth Games, it's yeah. a great way to connect people, young people as well. So that's really something for me. Um, and the money that we, we talk about, the money that's been raised for charity, you know, a lot of those charities, as Jimmy said, have been doing so much anyway throughout COVID with less money and less ability to fundraise. But after we come out of the pandemic, so many of them are going to have to do things very differently because we are going to be in a very different world. And the challenges that they're going to face is not going to get any lighter. It's going to be worse for some of them, yeah. such as homelessness, such as those going through the bereavement. So I think we need to continue to kind of build on that brummy spirit. So that's what I want to see more of. And um, that's where I want to see the happiness coming from is really is that brummy spirit, brummy mindset. Um, yeah, and I'll leave it there. I'm looking forward to having a drink with you all <laughs> after. <laughs> I feel like right, Sharon, because for the Commonwealth Games, I'm more than happy to uh, let Mr. Street, if he does win the uh, the elections coming up, and the Commonwealth Games, Mr. Ian Reid, who I know will watch this, is uh, I will allow the uh, print to uh, come along and be showed off in the crowds. Lovely. I was going to say, one of the things we can always be sure of here in Birmingham is the uh, great brummy spirit in times of adversity to, to bring us through, uh, often with humour as well, which helps raise and lift energies. Um, Nick, Nick, what's your thoughts? Yeah, so my underlying um, thing around this whole project is, is a sort of a, it's a big team hug. Yeah, oh, we, we, like, do we do that. that. Yeah, we do come that together, come together. Um, but the main thing is for those younger people, and it's the aspirational thing of not only the image, but the, the 250 people who have signed it. There might be one single person in there that resonates with a young person in a school that aspires them and inspires them to do great things with their life um, and the people around them. Um, underlying message is don't lie down and don't let anything beat you. Um, the world is everybody's oyster. Everyone has something special about them. So there are people out there who are down and out feeling pretty horrid at the moment. Don't feel like that. Look at something like what we've produced um, and inspire yourself to do great things because you, we all can. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful message. Beautiful message. Let me cry. Uh, uh, Jamil? He's going to make me cry. That man's going to make me cry. <laughs> Yes, go on, Drew, cry. Come on, on camera. <laughs> no, that was really inspirational, Nick. And I love, and that's one of the things I love about you, your enthusiasm, your community spirit as well. But that's what this whole group, this is what this whole project's been about, is that community spirit moving forward in unity. We've we kept to that message. We've used that message. 
and coming out of lockdown, um, you know, I'm going to be hugging people a lot more. So please be aware that if you see me, I will be coming for you right here because I miss you guys. <laughs> and I want that community spirit back. But, you know, you don't realize what you lost until you lose it. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to work incredibly hard to uh, help people as much as I can uh, uh, when, when lockdown is over. We're working incredibly hard right now. So I want to create a great community spirit in Birmingham because I know we all have it in, 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 a, in, in a sorry. Awesome. Thank you very much. Paul. I think that uh, one of the main points that we didn't mention tonight was that we were going to donate around 20 of the prints to some of the major charities, some of the charities that have been struggling. Uh, they're going to have one or two of the prints for them to do what they like. So they can follow the the, the fantastic lead of James and get, get 15, 17,000 pounds for them. Or they can put them on the wall as a point to, you know, poignant time where we beat a COVID when he came to take on Birmingham. We rolled up our sleeves and we beat it. You know, at no point have we rolled over or anything like that. So the Brummie uh, mindset, the Brummie attitude is quite important to me. But also, I think that it's all around the profile that we've done. So we've taken a project that was created in Birmingham. We've taken it globally and we put Birmingham possibly on the map, maybe just for a, a nanosecond or something like that. Birmingham was always on the map. <laughs> At least, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, agree. Yeah. But at yeah. least during during this COVID point, there's been a little bit of Brummy swagger, and we've just demonstrated to the world we can't be beaten. So from a, a, a Brummy, you know, I'm particularly proud of that. The people like Colchin, all the politicians that have got behind this and supported us, has been second to none, but exemplary. Um, I just want to thank everybody who's tuned in tonight and everybody that's donated and everybody who supported us. We've had some kids that have donated 25, 50 pence, which clearly got to be their pocket money. Yeah. And we've had generous people like James, you know, who's donated many, many thousands and things like that. This project will continue, will go on. It'll all have a ripple effect across the city, maybe hundreds of thousands of pounds. But more importantly, it's about our mindset, us coming together um, and supporting the city. That's it. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you, Paul. James? Well, what? I forgot what the original <laughs> question was now. <laughs> uh, the, the, the project, obviously, you've supported well to this now. Uh, and, and looking, you know, into 2021, some dreams about this project going on, but also about you as well and your connection with Birmingham. Yeah, absolutely. Look, I don't mind saying that, you know, when it first, you know, when it first started, I absolutely loved it. And I think... I think I got about till October, November, and I was like, oh, God, this art for charity thing's still going on. <laughs> you know, I think it's had its day sort of thing. And, you know, what I'll say behind people's backs, I'll always say to their face, and now I'm live, you know, to, to uh, hundreds of people saying it as well. It's um, And then I sort of changed again, and I was a bit like, you know what? There's more to this. And I just... I mean, I just lost my way a little bit, the way I was thinking, and I went back to when I first looked at the wall, and I was like, yeah... You know, it, it's this is not about what you personally think political wise. This is about frontline staff, about battling things, about the people who are suffering the most, which for me are definite are children. I think it's hilarious when I get the phone calls from my daughter's school at the moment saying, how is she getting on? And I feel like saying to the teachers, well, she's homeschooling me because academically she's brainier. <laughs> so, um, you know, but there's there's lots of children out there that are that don't have the internet. We'll never see this. Uh, might never see the wall. And I think having the books go into schools and things like this are, is a great achievement. And I just think it puts you into perspective sometimes that, we're sat on this call, we're all got the internet, we've all got a drink in our hands, you know, and everything, you know, everything might be tough, but it's not as tough as there's others. I'm aware of children that, you know, uh, are turning up to school in, you know, in clothes that they wear all week and they've got n absolutely nothing. And this has ripped their families apart. And I think, yeah, just moving ahead, I'm glad I can do my part. Um, for business wise, yep, we're property. You know, everyone needs a roof over their head. Um, I want to be more and more involved in the city moving forward. Yes, I'm controversial. Yes, I speak my mind. Not everyone might like it, but my heart's always in the right place, and that will always continue. If I can't, if I can't speak the way I think, 
then there's something actually wrong, I think. And, and I'll never stop that. So hopefully in the next few years, you'll see a lot more of me. Um, not just holding the picture around the Commonwealth Games and stuff, but apart from that, it's, um, I, I just want the city to change for the better place. And it's got to start from people like ourselves who have, and many other people who have given their time to this, that have, have literally just gone, you know what, we're going to give our time for free. And, you know, we want to be involved and we want to make a difference. And I think this is the first chance I've been given to say, I want to make a difference you know, and, and I think that would be fantastic if many other people want to do the same. Brilliant. Brilliant. Thanks, James. Yeah, Sorry, Nick. Yeah, fantastic. Brilliant words. Well done, James. And thank you for being first on the board for the uh, A0 Prince. Look, I just want to say thank you to each and every one of you and all of our viewers. If you get the opportunity, please share this video out so more can see the amazing work that's been done by these individuals and many more in the city. A great project, Art for Charity. Go over to the website, artforcharity.co.uk. It's on the screen right now. You can play it back on the video. Please at least buy a book. Get your advance order in for a book. It's a moment in history. 250 dignitaries signed. Here is, there it is. Thank you very much. Um, well worth getting, and you'll be doing so much good with it. Spread the word. Do your bit to support. Uh, thank you to each and every one of our guests. Give it up nice and loud tonight. Councillor, welcome. Thank you. Uh, Jimmy Shia, thank you. thank you very much. Good to have you back. Nick Hurd. Thank you, Nick. <coughs> 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 Not a boo. And also, my lovely co host for Real Random and Raw on a Friday night, James Forrester. Hey. Hey. Thanks, James. Uh, thank you to everybody. I have no idea who we've got next week. Any idea, James? I certainly do. And if I roll back to the chats here, he's also in this book. I'm hoping someone can tell me what bloody page, because there's 250 and uh, <coughs> two per page. I right. think he's actually, bear with me one second, we're running over, so who cares anyway? But I actually think he's chosen one of my numbers in the first place, so I'll pick that up next week. But uh, no, he didn't. So he's also in the book. He's also commented tonight. He's a great watcher of the show. We have missed. Oh, hang on. I'll put his face on now. Mr. <laughs> Peter Higgs. Oh, yeah. So the guy who has the franchise for B&I uh, West Midlands. Lovely. A lot of people say it's a cult. A lot of people are jealous of the amount of business it raises. But Mr. Higgs, like you guys, have no idea what we're going to ask him. And it will be very real, random, and raw. Uh, can I just say, I just joined b &I very recently, fantastic organisation, great way to do business, so if I'm joining it, why the hell aren't you guys joining it? Brilliant. Brilliant. Look, everybody, thank you so much for joining us here tonight for this. I know it's a portion of our life, and it's great for us all to get together, and we'll still be working hard to make sure that we promote this incredible and worthy campaign in our city for anybody that wants to see the artwork in the flesh or do we say in the paint i'm not really sure how that phrase works uh then go down to digbeth look at the lovely norton's bar on meriden street um and you can't miss it it's on the wall right there as you come round the corner onto meriden street and you'll see it uh go and take yourself some pictures get involved get some of this artwork check out the website and with that we'll catch you again next friday I'm Phil Oldershaw. Thank you to all of our guests. And we'll see you next week. Bye. See ya. Bye.